But first, the greatest defensive coach in the history of football and the team that he won the majority of the Super Bowls with, because he's got two with the Giants, Bill Belichick and the Patriots have parted ways after 24 seasons together. Bill Belichick, again, six Super Bowl titles, the head coach of the Patriots, won a multitude of divisional titles, went to another three Super Bowls uh, that, uh, along with the six that he won in New England. Again, he has the two Super Bowl appearances with the Giants as their defensive coordinator under Parcells. And uh, simply put, again, is the greatest defensive coach to ever walk this earth or in, in, in the NFL's grounds. You talk about a guy who's able to slow down the great Buffalo Bills offense in the early 1990s, so much so that his game plan was literally put in the Hall of Fame. You talk about a Bill Belichick who his first Super Bowl with the New England Patriots faced the greatest show on turf and held them to 17 points. And his defense ended up also getting a pick six in that game. Shout out to Ty Law. He also, his last Super Bowl, also against this now, the Los Angeles Rams, high scoring team uh, in the league, or high scoring Sean McVay team, and he's had some high scoring teams in the past, held him to a field goal. So he's the greatest defensive coach in the history of the National Football League. Many argue he's the GOAT coach. More on that in just a second. I don't subscribe to that theory. Again, more on that in just a moment. But to take into account what this Patriots dynasty had been, and obviously, listen, the dynasty ended the day Tom Brady walked out that door in 2020. Early 2020, and went to, to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Ended up that, that day, said it the day it happened, and uh, that obviously remained to be true. The Patriots have been to the playoffs one time in the last four years, and in that playoff game, they lost by 30. So the dynasty ended at that point. But this was one, this was a dynasty that was founded on what the NFL was great at, at the time or what made you great in the NFL at that time. It, you know, if you could be kind of an underdog team, which the Patriots were at that point, which was game managing quarterback who didn't make mistakes and play great defense. And that's kind of what the Patriots were, certainly in their first Super Bowl against the Los Angeles Rams. And you could argue in their third Super Bowl when they beat the Philadelphia Eagles. That second one, Tom was phenomenal against the Carolina Panthers. And then around 07, Randy Moss comes in the building. Tom ascends into the best or second best quarterback. Obviously, he went back and forth with Peyton Manning at that point in the league. 50 touchdown passes, MVP, Patriots almost went undefeated. Then you have the gap. Again, between 04 and 2014 of two Super Bowl appearances, both losses to Eli Manning of the Giants, but no titles in that span. And at that point, it looks like, hey, Dynasty might be kind of over. But then the resurgence in 2014, everybody talks about in that game with the New England played Seattle, about how, oh my God, the Seahawks should have run it for the one. And obviously, we, we all know they should have. But we often forget that the pass play was perfectly executed by Seattle. It's just the Patriots executed a little bit better. This undrafted rookie out of West Alabama, Malcolm Butler, remember that name? Watch this documentary called, or short documentary really, called Do Your Job, which was Bill's moniker in New England. And Bill and the Patriots coaches, Brian Flores, who was on, on that Patriots staff, they coached Malcolm to be ready for that play. Won him a Super Bowl. Won a couple more after that. The comeback against Atlanta, the win against the Rams, in which the Belichick led Patriots defense, held Los Angeles to a single field goal in that game. But part of the story with Bill with Belichick is this as well, is that number one, or really, it's really threefold. Number one, the scandals. Spygate won pretty darn serious in, in 2007, in 2006, 2007, spying on Eric Mangini, who was a former assistant with the Patriots and the New York Jets. Then you had the second spy gate, which happened Brady's last year when they were, I remember talking about this on the show at the time, uh, spying, oddly spying on the Cincinnati Bengals, uh, who were the worst team in the league that year, but spying on Cincinnati. And I remember the tape came out about the NFL reviewing that. And there were some, some, uh, some Patriot staffers saying like, you know, we can, we can delete it, blah, blah, blah. And some NFL exec, you could hear in the background say, Hey, damage is done now. So you had some shady stuff. Defl I'm not even going to include deflate gate. It's the biggest sham of a scandal that has ever been ever been instituted because of the simple fact that the Colts got the doors blown off them 45 to 7 in the 2014 AFC title game some linebacker disgruntled linebacker went to the league said the ball was more deflated than it should have been just conveniently leaving out the fact that uh, in cold weather and this is proven in this is just a scientific fact football's getting deflated I mean we've had I've we've seen high school students do tests on this high schoolers you're telling me the NFL couldn't have done something about this but 
There was a, something against Brady and Belichick, and we can go into that another show another day. You have that component. So the scandals do matter. Deflategate's a bunch of nonsense, but Spygate, not great for Bill's legacy or for the Patriots' legacy as a whole. The second thing is that Bra- I'm sorry, Belichick without Brady, and we can even go back to his days with the Cleveland Browns, in which, yes, he got to the playoffs. Browns actually won a playoff game in the early 90s, but they never, ever ascended to heights that Belichick did with the New England Patriots. Belichick without Brady, not the same coach. Without Tom Brady in his career, uh, Mr. Belichick was a uh, had a record of 83-104. and 104. He was 21 games below 500. Without Tom in New England, he was 29-39, and 39, 10 games below 500. You say, well, Bryson, that's that's not it's not entirely fair. First of all, he's the greatest quarterback ever. Uh, anything else is a downgrade. And second of all, I mean, you got to win, have a great quarterback in order to be successful. Not if you are a greater coach, at least in the offensive side of the ball. Andy Reid went to five NFC Championship games with Donovan McNabb, good quarterback. Alex Smith level quarterback who Andy Reid made the playoffs time and time and time again with one division titles with, but it wasn't until Andy Reid got Patrick Mahomes that he ascended to new heights. It's natural for Belichick to not be quite as successful without the goat. That's nobody's going to kill him for that, but it was not even close. That's where the, the debate about, Hey, who was more important? It kind of permanently shifted into Brady's favor. Now, the good news before we move on to the final sort of downside of Belichick's legacy, the good news for, for Bill is that he seems interested in coaching still. I mean, he, he, he's like all the reports coming out of New England. Belichick alluded to himself in the press conference yesterday. Like, I'm not done coaching. Bill's only 71 years old. Uh, you, know, you know, Pete Carroll was, was essentially removed from his, his job as the Seahawks head coach. Pete Carroll seems to want to coach. Belichick does as well. So... Is there a job available that could amuse him? I'll talk more about that a little later in the show with another coach who's on the hot seat going to the playoffs this weekend. We'll see. Um, but you have that component on too as well. Bill can obviously pass Don Shula's, Don Shula's all-time head coach record, which he's 15 wins behind. So a couple seasons with a ready-made Super Bowl contending team, he'll pass Shula. And then the last component is this, and I think this to me, more than the scandals, more than the lack of success without Brady, is kind of the biggest downside of Bill's legacy. He didn't adapt. The game passed him by. Remember I was talking about Nick Saban on Wednesday's show. Part of the thing that ascends Nick Saban to undeniably the greatest college football coach of all time is that when Saban came in, that first national title came in in 07, they won the national, their first national title in the 2009 season. At that point, it was a ground and pound. Mark Ingram run the football team, great O-lines, and great defenses. And then around the mid-2010s, it's like, no, you need Jalen Hurts. And you need Tua. And you need Matt Jones. I could barely get that out of my mouth. With great receivers. And you need Bryce Young, Heisman Trophy winner. You need dynamic playmakers at quarterback. It's the same in the National Football League. Nick adjusted. His buddy Bill did not. He tried the Cam Newton experiment. Even before the Cam Newton experiment, when Tom Brady left, up until late June, I remember, I think Cam Newton might have signed him like my birthday that year. So it was like late June. You know, their plan was Jarrett Stidham, who's a backup quarterback in the NFL. Solid backup, but an obvious backup. That was their backup plan to replace the GOAT. Then they tried the Cam thing. That didn't work. And then they drafted Mac Jones out of Alabama, who this is not revisionist history. I said coming into that draft, you can go back and check the tape from early 2021. I said I drafted him in the third round, no higher. He is not an NFL starting quarterback. He's immobile, noodle arm. And as we came to find out, not the greatest leader and wasn't terribly receptive to coaching. But Belichick stuck with Mac, had a good rookie year, but finished pretty bad. Year two, it was even worse. And Belichick, in defense of Mac, employed Matt Patricia, a defensive guy, to call the offensive plays. And then this year was the low point. The Patriots only won four games. Mac Jones was benched, and they had to roll with Bailey Zappi for the end of, to the end of the year. New England seemingly didn't make an attempt to replace Tom, to get a dynamic player at the quarterback position. And even in just in terms of finding talent, Belichick wasn't very good at that either. As the de facto general manager of the Patriots, if you go back to 2012, 
Yeah, it's the last time New England drafted a pro bowler in the first round. That was Dante Hightower, who had a very successful career with the Patriots. Every other year, first round, did not draft a pro bowler. Mac Jones was a pro bowl replacement, but come on. Like, what are we doing? Had some questionable drafts. I remember last year was odd. He drafted multiple guards and kickers. It was just weird. It was time to move on. Props to Robert Kraft, uh, who, who, who saw through this. Robert Kraft is, is one of those owners. Like, he's a competitive dude. He's not going to be one of these owners that just collects his check, doesn't care how the team does. No, no, no. Bob Kraft isn't going to sit high, idly by, watch his team be run into the ground, and not do anything about it. It was time. Belichick had a phenomenal run. He's the greatest defensive coach of all time. I put guys like Bill Walsh over. I think Bill Walsh, the greatest coach ever. He literally changed offense. His offensive scheme, the West Coast system, is used to this day, decades later. But would I hire Bill Belichick with a Super Bowl-ready roster that he doesn't have to handpick or draft with a great quarterback? Absolutely. If I didn't want to go after Jim Harbaugh or Mike Vrabel, then I'd probably go to Belichick. So my guess is this is not the last time we'll see Bill in the NFL. That's a good thing. Uh, there's a lot of teams out there with great quarterbacks and terrible defenses that he per fit perfectly. Only time will tell where he goes. All I'll say is this as a little teaser a half hour from now. There's a team that's in the playoffs right now that I think Bill would be a marvelous fit for. But shout out to Bill Belichick. Phenomenal career in New England. Deserves all the love and adoration he's gotten and will get. But we do also have to, this isn't carving up the context, but we do also have to provide some context into the downsides of the, of the Belichick run, which they're not many, but there are some, and they are significant. Nonetheless, hats off to Bill Belichick. Heck of a run. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube, and be sure to go click that big red subscribe button and check out the other clips and full shows from Carving It Up Live as well as our other incredible content creators here on the Grid Network.